it's not that eating chocolate and pizza is bad for you, right? It's not that, because everything in life is moderation. Hello everybody, we are back with your host, myself, Rebecca Louise on the It Takes Grip podcast. Thank you so much for all of your love and support on this podcast. It really does make a difference when you guys send in messages, you leave us reviews, and it's you guys who have created this podcast to be where it is. I mean, I'm just amazed at the hundreds of thousands of downloads and how much you guys are enjoying it and getting that weekly little boost of motivation and mindset work that you need to helping you find the grip to get to exactly where you wanna be. Now today, we are talking about emotional eating and how to reprogram your brain. And it's interesting because as a lot of you guys know, or some of you might not know, I am attempting to summit Mount Everest in April, May of 2022. And one of the things that I get to do, I, I would say like I have to do, but I'm changing that language that I get to do is gain weight, right? Because once we're up on the mountain, you know, I might often, you know, lose some weight. I'm going to be cold. I really do feel the cold because I'm, I'm pretty lean. And so I just don't really have that much fat on me. So if I can add a little bit of fat to me, I'm not going to be as cold. It's going to give me a better shot. And I just want to feel like a little bit stronger, right? If you think about it, just getting a little bit more stronger. So once I get onto the mountain, I have a better shot. And it's been an interesting journey thinking about like when I go and have dinner and trying to eat more food throughout the day and not really tracking it. Typically, I, I'm, I'm so so disciplined and I know exactly what kind of foods that I'm going to have throughout the day and I'll have like one pizza pizza or one piece of chocolate and now I'm just like shoving it all in. <laughs> I'm just trying to get as many calories as I can in and just not even worrying about like the outcome. I'm just, I don't even have really much of a plan. I, I'm kind of figuring it out. I'm in my first couple of weeks, so I'll, I'm documenting everything on social media. And so I'll give you a little bit more about what I'm actually eating. Now, am I eating pizza and chocolate? Yes, I am. I'm also adding you know, more of the healthy nutritional stuff into my diet too. Yes, so it is a balance of both. But for me, you know, eating a couple of extra slices of pizza throughout the week is really gonna help me add in those calories and uh, gonna, like, get a few extra pounds on me. But I wanna talk about emotional eating, how we get to reprogram our brain and, and what that actually means. Um, you know, emotional eating, you know, sometimes even can be depriving yourself of it. Like it's an emotional thing. I remember when I was in my teens, 17 years old, I had this like, the, my, my emotions was to not eat the food. My emotion was to go through and eat a couple of seeds and I didn't have a great relationship with food. And even when we're going through a stressful period in our lives, it's so, it can be so easy just to give in and say, you know what, well, I'm going through this. And this is why I need to eat this food. Or even in life, in business, like, oh, I'm going through this thing in my life right now and that's why this has suffered. The thing with that mindset, why I wanna really talk about reprogramming that today, is that something is always going to come up. And what you're going through might not, right now might not be even as bad as something that, you know, is gonna to get to happen to you in a couple of months time. So. So often we make an excuse for where we're at and we say, well, the reason that we haven't taken action is because of this. Well, the reason we haven't taken action is because of that. The reason I'm eating these foods is because of that. But what you want to look at is what's the future going to be like for me? If something more catastrophic or tragic or difficult happens to me, how am I going to react? Or can I reprogram my brain now so that when something even more challenging happens to me, I've already got the tools so that I don't fall off the wagon, I don't like fall off the, the, the planet Earth, and I don't kind of lose myself in feeding my body healthy nutrition. Because it's not that eating chocolate and pizza is bad for you, right? It's not that. Because everything in life is moderation. It's what else are you eating throughout the day? Because if you are having healthy shakes, you're getting your supplements in, you're giving yourself fruit and vegetables and lean protein, and you're feeding your body like, you know, 70% amazing food throughout the day, and you're actually bringing good nutrition in. If you have some chocolate, if you have some pizza, that's okay. But it's if you are only eating things like pizza and fries and chocolate and, you know, burgers and, and, and deep fried food and, and, you know, things that are processed, 
that's when you want to start to look at, okay, what am I putting into my body and why am I eating these foods? Like, what is it beneficially doing to me? Is it just, you know, serving like a taste for me? Is it because I'm kind of feeling sorry for myself that I want to feed, have this food, but then you feel awful, awful afterwards, right? You don't even feel that good when you're eating all these foods. So often it's a comfort thing. But how can we reprogram our brain to say, you know, I'm not feeling that great today, but I'm going to make myself a really healthy smoothie that's full of vitamins and minerals so that I can actually give myself the comfort that my body needs, right? What if we could reprogram our brain to thinking that comfort food is actually food that's really great for us because that is technically actually what's going to comfort us, right? It's going to comfort us in a loving way. When we feed ourselves like food that's like not great for us, right? It's definitely not comfortable. It's definitely not comfortable for your digestive system, right? I know, like, I ate a whole bunch of cheese and wine and bread the other night, and, like, my stomach, like, hurt. I was like, this is anything but comfortable, right? So it's funny that we call it comfort food when we're eating these foods, but really, like, it's actually uncomfortable because of what it does to your digestive system. So, you know, often if we think, like, oh, they're the comfort the comfort foods, we get into our head about that. But this is why I want to talk today about like that, how to retrain and reprogram your brain in thinking that, hey, how could comfort foods actually just be foods that are really good for me and they're going to comfort me and comfort my digestive system, comfort my heart and comfort my whole body, right? So how does food make you feel? You know, so often when we're going through a challenging time, you know, we grab the things that are kind of fast, that we know that are going to give us like a temporary like high, right? It's like a temporary fix. And those chocolates and the pizza at the time make us feel like, oh, like it's like a short term thing. But then we actually feel worse afterwards. And then we start to beat ourselves up and then we get more emotional for the foods that we've just eaten. So I want you to think about a time where you know you didn't feel that great and maybe you went to emotional eating and you went to grab a, a, some food that wasn't the best for you and you ate like a lot of it. And I want you to realize and understand and kind of reflect back on like how did that make you feel at the time. Now I'm not giving a bad, you know, I don't want you to have any bad like relationships with any kind of food. Pizza's amazing. Fr truffle fries are incredible. Prosecco. Prosecco and truffle fries any day with some chocolate. Like my absolute favorite, right? You guys know that. It's not it's not a secret. But if I ate that food every single day, I wouldn't have the energy that I have. I wouldn't be able to have the mindset that I have. I wouldn't be able to, you know, produce workout videos and, and video content and just be a, a happy individual person, right? So I want you to start to think about how does each food make you feel, right? And if you have one pizza pizza, it's not going to make you feel that bad. It's only if you have like five, six, seven, eight, you're going through the whole pizza pizza, right? And once in a while, again, that's absolutely fine. And sometimes we want to diagnose ourselves with, oh my goodness, we're, I'm just an emotional eater. That's not true. Never, ever, ever label yourself. Sometimes I emotionally eat. That's it. That's all you're going to say. Sometimes I, sometimes I emotionally eat. I'm not an emotional eater. Sometimes I emotionally eat. Because if you say I'm an emotional eater, what happens? It reiterates that you are and then you keep doing that. So sometimes, you know, in the past, I have emotionally ate. You know, sometimes, it, you know, I've, I've eaten a little bit too much chocolate because I haven't felt that great. You know, I remember, you know, going through a breakup and you're kind of eating crappy food because it's making you feel good. It's the only thing that you can even get into your system at the time because you're just like, Ugh, right? You just feel kind of crappy. So you're just trying to get some food in. But just reflect back about foods that make you feel great. And so when you are going through a difficult time, how can you support your body with really great food to make yourself feel better? Right? That's what I, I want you to understand today is that we get to reprogram our mind in thinking how can we feel even better when we're going through a difficult time? Because we're all going to have those periods in our life. But what we want to do is, one, we want to surround ourselves by amazing individuals to pick us up. But also, too, we want to take ownership and responsibility of what we're putting in our own bodies. All right. And then when it comes to that emotional eating, I want you to kind of think about like what does that hunger feel like? You know, if you're going throughout the day, you know, if you, if you haven't eaten for, you know, like over six hours, like you, you want to kind of like make sure that you're giving your body food on a, on a regular basis throughout the day, right? And you want to acknowledge your body. If you are hungry, then you want to eat. And then just pick something that is healthy, relatively healthy, right? Get some Greek yogurt and some berries and, you know, some cashew butter and some, a banana, um, a healthy shake. And if we don't have the things that are in our home, 
that are the quick, easy things to grab. What happens is we end up eating things, you know, from, you know, a, a local uh, gas station, from petrol station, we grab like quick things that are the quick comfort things that's going to fit our need in that moment, right? But if you've already set yourself up, remember failing to prepare is preparing to fail. If we are set up successfully, when you go onto your, you know, account to order your food, I always use Instacart, my groceries, I know it's the same thing every time. I might throw in, you know, some Referro Rocher chocolates, I might throw in some cheese one time, but it's definitely not more than 20% of my order, right? And it stops me from emotional eating, it stops me from just eating chocolate all the time or crisps, right? I'm making sure that in my car and in my pantry and in my fridge, I have got 80%, which is high octane, great nutrition. And there's 20% of it that's gonna have like the bit of, you know, the fun party stuff, right? The things that you have when you have like guests over. So I want you to appreciate all foods, right? When we talk about emotional eating, sometimes we can get triggered by it. Sometimes we can get like a little bit defensive, like, well, I'm feeling like this and that's what my body is craving and what it needs, right? But it's what you need short term. Your body long term, when you are you know, going through something, doesn't need a whole bunch of crap shoved in your body. It's gonna make it feel worse. So that's why this isn't just about like emotional eating and how to you know, work on it. It's about reprogramming our brain about what emotional eating could be. Could emotional eating for you be, hey, I, I emotionally eat sometimes, but it's packed full of fruits and vegetables and things that are gonna be comforting and helping me with my digestive system, right? Like I said at the beginning, how is it comfort food when it makes you feel like crap and you're going in the bathroom? Like, did you have too much cheese, right? You know, we can redefine the words emotional eating. We can redefine the words comfort foods, right? Because it's definitely not comfortable, you know, once you've eaten a whole bunch of food that's not going to be really great for you. But I want you to appreciate all food, everything in moderation. And I was listening to a call today and someone was talking about, you know, well, I've done 75 hard, but then I stopped and I went to eat back the way I was before. Absolutely, because it's 75 hard, it's not life hard, right? It's like, yes, it's 75 days. It's why diets don't work, because people go on them, they go off them, they go back to how they were before, and then they're just like, I'm yo-yo dieting. That's, ex that's exactly the definition of yo-yo dieting. However, when we choose a healthy lifestyle with things in moderation and we don't cut things out, we just add in really high octane nutrition in, that's how we're gonna be able to maintain it forever. That's how we're gonna be able to maintain how we feel, how our body feels, how we work throughout the day, keeping our energy up, our digestive health, right? If you wanna be healthy, you can't just, you know, if you wanna be healthy forever, you can't just feed your body healthy foods for a month and expect it to last you a lifetime. So appreciate all foods, but everything in moderation. And then lastly, like the consistency of eating healthy food is gonna, is gonna create that discipline. And when you have the discipline, that's when you get results. So we get to rewrite that story today, right? Rewriting that story about emotional eating. Like, how can I consistently add in great nutrition in my body? How can I be more disciplined about doing that? When I'm consistent, you create the habit, you create the discipline, and then you're gonna get the results, right? Your result doesn't need to be, I wanna get like 10% body fat and abs and you know, ripped up and shredded and super lean. Could be like, hey, I just wanna feel amazing every day. I just want to feel like a 10 out of 10 on energy and feel great and have great nutrition put in my body, high octane nutrition that's fueling my body, that's making me feel amazing. And taking out that concept of like, I'm an emotional eater. No, if you say that about yourself, you reinforce that that is who you are. So I highly suggest that next time that it kind of comes up and you're having one of those down moments, know that this is just the universe testing you. And if you want to get through those challenging times in your life, you're going to need a bit more energy, okay? You're going to need it. And how do you get more energy? You get more energy from the fuel that you put in your body. So utilize that properly. Utilize it. If you need more energy because you're going through something challenging, you need the nutrition even more. You need to be able to give your body the things that it needs to push through those things and to come out as a winner on the other side. That's not to say that you can't have a piece of pizza, some chocolate, or enjoy something, but everything in moderation. Don't label yourself, enjoy food, have an amazing, amazing, amazing meal every single day that you know that you are looking after your body. Because as Jim Rohn says, the only place that you have to live is your body. Your body is the only place that you have to live. Huh. All right, take a deep breath, everybody. 
<sighs> is everyone like, hey, I want a really powerful, amazing shake with high octane nutrition. I'm gonna go and make an amazing shake. Yes, you are. All right, guys, well, thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions, make sure that you drop it or you send me a message on the It Takes Grit podcast Instagram. I'm here to support you. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for all of the love and support from my Everest journey. I'm gonna keep on documenting that. And uh, I do have a videographer coming up with me as well. So it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be unbelievable. I'm so excited about it. And I'll be thinking about you guys every single step. All right, I will see you on next week's episode. Bye.